in the headlines. International Women's Day marked to celebrate achievements and raise awareness. Appeal Court decides INEC application on Beaver's reconfiguration. Senators select get certificate of return from INEC. Away from Nigeria, United Nations mission says Afghan women most repressed in the world. Hello and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I am Ayuba Ila. Thanks for joining. And now the details. International Women's Day is marked to celebrate achievements of women and raise awareness on gender parity. Minister of Women Affairs Dame Pauline Tallinn has urged Nigerian women to remain resilient and not give up the struggle for gender inclusion in governance. Tallinn gave the message during an interview with Trust TV to commemorate the 2023 International Women's Day celebration. Dana Daniel Zaghi has details of the report. March 8 is set aside by the United Nations as International Women's Day, a day that seeks to celebrate the social, economic, political and cultural achievements of women globally. The theme for this year is Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. As Nigerian women join the world to celebrate the day, they outline some developmental challenges facing women in the country. Some women now, they are the ones holding the home. They'll go out and puzzle, walk, you know, do one or two things to sustain the family. What women face is um, how the men or the society see women. They feel like women don't have a voice. They feel they are, um, you can't be an authority. Um, which is wrong. The Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Talon, speaks on policies and programs in place to foster women development. The main issues affecting women is empowering. When you empower a woman, you have uh, empowered the family, you have empowered the society and the nation at large. So the first empowerment that a woman needs is education. When you educate a woman, you have empowered her for life. So that's why we work closely with the Ministry of Education. Education of the girl child is very, very key. Amidst concerns of low participation of women in politics, Nigerian women plead for more inclusion and support from society. A lot of women are not allowed in politics. So we even have, they say, women supporting women. We have women that come out to campaign, they will contest for political powers. But even when you check like the amount of votes they have, they, some of them they even have up to 10. And when you check, it's even maybe their brothers, not even like their fellow women that even vote for them. It's wrong. Let's start giving women, you know, the chance to, if they don't do it, then you can vote them out like in the next year. But at least let's give them the opportunity to attain this power and let's see what they can do. We are still uh, looking out to see whether we can get more women in the in the hems on their face. A lot of years passed. Women has proven that wherever they are, they can prove that they can do it better than men. But it's giving them opportunity. And because we don't have what it takes most time, you find out that some women shy away. That's what, so we need to be encouraged. Amidst the euphoria of celebrating women globally lie the weights they carry daily from the roadside vendor, the corporate worker, mother and girls, the concern for a better life for her and her family is the drive to make ends meet. Dana Daniel Zegi, Trust TV, Abuja. The Court of Appeal Abuja will on Wednesday afternoon deliver ruling on a request by the Independent National Electoral Commission seeking a review of its orders permitting Peter Obi and Atiku Abubakar to inspect electoral materials used for the conduct of the presidential election. The duo was granted leave by the appellate court to inspect them by modal voter accreditation system machines and other sensitive materials that INEC deployed for the conduct of the February 25 poll. The court had restrained INEC for tampering with the Beaver's machines. INEC had approached the appellate court to vary the orders, and the electoral umpire explained that it needed to reconfigure the Beaver's machines and redeploy them for this Saturday, 11 March, governorship and state parliamentary election. 
The Independent National Electoral Commission on Tuesday presented certificates of return to elected members of the National Assembly. Senators-elect and members-elect for the 10th Assembly will be inaugurated in June this year. Noel Samson reports. Elected members of the National Assembly whose elections were declared by the INEC gathered at the International Conference Center for the ritual of presentation of certificate of return. Most of the elected members with smiling faces appreciated God and the voters for electing them to present their interests at the upper chamber of the National Assembly. They set an agenda for the incoming 10th Assembly. I am going to pay attention to persons with disability, youth and women, and also looking at the, some of the policies that FCET needs to access um, funds for health, education and agriculture. I intend to look at the well-being of the people. I am the representative of the people in the FCT. My agenda is to tackle insecurity in my place. You know, my, the Senatorial District is bedvidled with a lot of security challenges and uh, I use my position in the Senate to make laws that will alleviate the security challenges of, 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 of uh, affected places in my senatorial district. The 10th Senate is expected to be a very strong Senate that must focus on the people of Nigeria. Uh, this time that I have returned, uh, I assure the Nigerian people that I will put myself in their service. All the things I will do in this 10th Senate will be for the benefit of the Nigerian people. I have always believed and I remain convinced that a system works better when it delivers the greatest good to the greatest number. And as this stand, the greatest number of our citizens are on the poor side. So I want to have a, I want to be part of a Senate that legislates for the good of the greatest number of our countrymen. National Assembly elections in Sokoto State were declared inconclusive, as such as no winner is declared, just as senatorial election for Enugu East is postponed to March 11th. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. Nigerians will go to the poll again to elect governors during the Saturday's governorship and state assembly elections. It is a ritual they do every four years. In this report, Trust TV Shafiu Suleiman takes a look at previous outcomes and what could likely be the scenario this time. The military regime of General Abdesalami Abubakar ushered in the fourth republic in Nigeria would return to democratic rule in 1999. Though largely a three-host race between three major political parties, PDP, APP and AD, the election produced a set of democratically elected governors aligned with the strength of the platforms. Results of the 2003 governorship elections show that Donald Duke of the PDP polled the highest votes with 1,193,290, while the lowest votes in the election was that of the PDP candidate in Plateau State, Joshua Darie, scoring 364,903 votes. However, in 2011, PDP governorship candidate in River State, Roti Miyamichi, polled the highest votes in the contest with 1,178,529 votes, representing 85.81% of the votes cast in the state. In 2011, Ogun State Abiola Jimobi of the ACN won with the lowest votes of 420,852, representing 37.41% of the state's total votes to win the election. Though electoral contests, governorship election inclusive are largely a two or three horse race in the previous exercises. The emergence of the Labour Party LP in 2023 as an undisputed third force, going by the just concluded presidential election results and the disruptions it created in some states, there is indication it could change the established voting patterns. Observers project that PDP is likely going to share the South-South states with the Labour Party. The emerging third force could sweep the governorship results of the South-East, while the APC will struggle to retain its South-Western states. In the same analysis, however, the APC, which dominates the state government houses in the Northwest and Northeast, may equally have a running battle retaining its controlled states. If the outcome of the just-concluded presidential election is anything to go by, 
the north central part of the country, may witness a shift in the election voting pattern, with the Labour Party making an inroad due to influence of newly embraced election criteria. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. Ahead of March 11 governorship elections in River State, Labour Party in the state has thrown its weight behind the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Simily Alae Fubara. Now, the, deci the decision, according to the state party chairman, Denye Pepel, is due to the crisis rocking the party on who is the rightful governorship candidate of the party in River State. The report. Labour Party chairman in River State, Denye Pepel, while declaring support for the PDP, pointed at an other for the party not to remain in the dark and in line with the position of its 23 local government areas chairman. It decided to support a credible candidate irrespective of the party affiliation by adopting a candidate who is young and vibrant in hills from the senatorial district that has not produced a governor before in the state. Purple stressed that the adoption was in a bid to hold on to its tenets of equity, fairness, justice and balance. In the past few days, the party in the state was hit by a major shock of an unknown person surfacing and claiming to be our gubernatorial candidate. Coupled with the news making rounds on social media that our gubernatorial candidate has stepped down and adopted the APC candidate. In order for us not to remain in the dark, the party in line with the 23 LGA chairman and all the state escorts has decided to support a credible candidate irrespective of the party affiliation, a candidate who must be young and vibrant and must hail from the senatorial district that haven't produced a governor before in this. The yes of the Labour Party consider its decision both fundamental and essential to the stability, progress and growth of River State and by extension, Nigeria. As Labour Party members and as obedience adherents to the aforementioned values, we must come out and support a region that has never in the history of the state produced a governor. Voting a reverend candidate in the person of Sarasinala Joseph Fubara from the southeast central district of the state during the upcoming gubernatorial polls ensures that the Labour Party and our members are defenders and ambassadors of the values that have set her and the obedient movement apart from all other parties. During the Saturday, February 25th, Presidential and National Assembly elections in River State, the same Labour Party chairman, who was at the State Election Coalition Centre, launched a vocal protest at the State Coalition Centre over the results of the Obiakbo local government area. He, however, urged all Labour Party member supporters to come out in their numbers on Saturday, 11th March 2023, to vote the PDP candidate for governorship and vote all other Labour Party candidates for State House of Assembly in their various constituencies. In the reaction, the National Chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Aburi, has dissolved the party's State Executive Council in River State for alleged anti-party activities and corruption in management of party's funds. Aburi, in a statement on Tuesday, said that the dissolution is with immediate effect. He said the members at the helm of affairs uh, when the party's presidential mandate was, what mandate was openly stolen in River State should step aside until full investigation is completed. Aburi said that he has lost confidence in the ability of the compromised State Executive Council, led by Denye Peppel, to lead the campaign for the governorship and the State House of Assembly elections come March 11. He urged all obedience in the state to disregard all comments and actions by Pepo. Aburi said Beatrice Itubo remains the, the Labour Party candidate for the Saturday's governorship election in the state. The chairman also said that the Labour Party has not formed an alliance with any political party. Now, residents of Yola, the Adama state capital, have expressed divergent views on the chances of the only female candidate for governorship election in the country. She will win because she has a more supporters and we women, we love her because whatever she's doing, she's trying her best 
she's doing good for us. We human, we will support her and we will vote for her. Adama is already for a female governor. Why? Because we Africa, we don't believe that women rule over men. And therefore, Niger Nigeria will not give a female at this time. It will come a time that a female will be the president. But not now. We are not ready for that. That this time around, let us allow a woman to, to lead us. Men have been trying their best. But let's try women. Let's women try and let us know how capable women can be able to rule us. Let's stop looking down on women, thinking that women cannot do better. To my own opinion, let us try. Let us, let us just give it a try and see either if women cannot do better. So that is my opinion. The police force headquarters in Abuja has warned against the use of docks at polling units in Saturday's governorship and state house of assembly elections. The police said that the warning became necessary following plans by some voters to go to the polling units with their docks to protect their votes and prevent how, how's, uh, those planning rather, to snatch ballot boxes uh, from doing so during the elections. Force Public Relations Officer Olumuiwa Adejobi, who gave the warning, described the act as unacceptable and an electoral infraction as it will cause harassment and intimidation. It therefore warned those who intended to display their pets, especially dogs, for whatever purpose at the polling unit to desist as such constitutes a violation of the Electoral Act 2022 as amended and other extant laws. You're watching the news update on Trust TV coming up shortly. We'll take a look at how Katsina community gets classrooms. Details of this and more after the break. Welcome back. This is the news update on Trust TV. Let's take a look at the top stories again. International Women's Day marked to celebrate achievements and raise awareness. Appeal Court decides INEC application on Beaver's reconfiguration. Now, reactions have continued to trail the Supreme Court judgment extending the validity of the old 1,500 and 200 Naira notes. A cross-section of Nigerians wants the federal government and the Apex Bank to comply with the court judgment in order to end the hardship occasioned by the policy. Chamo Dabeng reports. Last week, Friday, the Supreme Court nullified the implementation of the CBN's Naira redesign policy and ruled that the old 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes remain legal tender until December 31, 2023. Following the implementation of the policy, the Apex Bank said the money in circulation dropped from 3.29 trillion Naira to 1.38 trillion Naira. However, economist Stephen Wachuku believes that the Naira redesign policy has had adverse effects on the central bank's quest to reduce money in circulation. Naira has become a scarce commodity and is now more profitable to hold Naira. You can't find Nigerians going to the bank to deposit the old note or even the new note. It has also, you know, uh, inevitably increase the volume of cash required to be in the system. Pyro before now, CBN told us that they have about 3.2 trillion in circulation. And 3.2 trillion is serving the system as we start, as we speak now. In fact, the available statistic says that over 5 trillion is needed. Four days after the Supreme Court nullified the implementation of the central bank's Naira redesign policy, the Naira supply has not increased and Nigerians are reluctant to transact with the old 1,500 Naira notes. 
Uh, actually, nothing has really happened um, positively. It's still been the same thing, you know, to get money now, nothing, no way. You go to the bank, you can't get money. The POS guys, POS guys are not giving you the money. When we had the Supreme Court uh, judgment that we, be, that we should be spending the money, we are waiting for the president now to broadcast now that we should continue or not. We are waiting for him. We are waiting for him now. On February 8th, the Supreme Court issued an interim injunction preventing the federal government from suspending the use of the old major denominations by February 10th. However, this was soon followed by a broadcast by President Buhari stating that the deadline remains. The Supreme Court declared that the decision by the president not to implement the interim court order was against the rule of law. But keeping silent and not talking to the public creates this needless confusion because at the end of the day there is that mistrust and misgiven. The people would still have in mind that Mr. President had disobeyed the central bank and uh, there is also the probability that he could also disobey the central bank this time around, uh, the uh, Supreme Court this time around, I think Mr. President would need to address that issue. For the sake of the rule of law and for the sake of uh, respect for the Apex Court. Many Nigerians were hopeful that the Naira scarcity will gradually ease following the presidential elections, but this has not been the case as citizens continue to call on the government to address the issue once and for all. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, communities in Wawia and Walawol in Dute, local government area of Katsina State, will soon get primary school. This followed a recent visit to the communities by Trust TV News crew who reported the dire need for a primary school for their children to have access to education. While we are in Walowol, villages have been without social amenities over the two decades after the return of democracy in Nigeria, despite their active participation in politics. Abdullahi Amadi completes the story. At first, when Trust TV visited the area, children from the two communities were taking lessons in a makeshift classes with residents calling on the relevant authorities to come to their aid. Residents of the two communities of Wawia and Walawal are suffering absence of social amenities, especially school, roads, and water shortage. Residents of Wawia and Walawal are lucky as the Katana State Primary Education Board heeds to their calls. How are you? Yeah, At a visit to the area, the chairman, Lawal Buhari Dawra, gave assurances that the board will construct classes and provide teachers. You have seen the number of children that are here that, that are not going to the school. And all those who are fighting against children not going to school, you should do with out of school children. We are always fighting on it. And that is why we are trying all those things. You can see even the class that they are in now is locally made. Of which, with time, we are going to find a land for them. And I assure them, inshallah, we are going to construct a class for them. Similarly, the senator representing Katsuna North at the National Assembly, Ahmed Babakita, is constructing a block of two classrooms for the villagers. This means the communities can now boast of having at least a primary school as dividend of democracy since its return in 1999. We sincerely appreciate this TV station for coming to our rescue, which through your reportage, we are now considered for at least one primary school for our children. The number of school-aged children from these communities 
is unprecedented. We thank God. In the same vein, the construction of the primary school will greatly reduce the menace of out-of-school children bedeviling the state and the country as a whole. Abdullahi Ismail Amadi, Crossed Television News, Kazana. Now, away from Nigeria, Afghanistan, under the Taliban government, is the most repressive country in the world for women's rights, with authorities ex effectively trapping women and girls in their homes, the United Nations said on Wednesday. About 20 women held a rare demonstration in a Kabul street on Wednesday, calling on the international community to protect Afghans, AFP journalists witnessed. The Taliban government has imposed restrictions on girls and women since seizing power in August 2021. The UN mission said that the crackdown was a colossal act of national self-harm at a time Afghanistan faces some of the world's largest humanitarian and economic crisis. Taliban authorities have removed women from all but essential government jobs who all are paying them a fraction of their former salary to stay at home. But the biggest crackdown has been on teenage girls and university students with the authorities banning them from secondary schools and higher educational institutions. And in sports news, following the completion of the 2023 World Cup qualifying windows, FIBA has announced the latest ranking of the countries despite winning the top two games of the final windows in Africa. The Nigerian side lost its position to Cape Verde. According to the latest ranking, the Tigers placed as the top playing basketball country in the continent and the 19th in the world with 461.4 points. Tunisia is placed second in the continent with 448.6 points and Senegal is in the third position and Angola is in the fourth position. And that's a wrap on Trust News Update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube channel. I am Ayuba Ina. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.